good afternoon to all before starting my presentation i would like to thank the ncam organization organizer our honorable directors seniors colleagues and participants as well today i will discuss the topic on introduction on carbonaceous aerosol in ambient air we will start with the definition of aerosol what is aerosol aerosol is defined as suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas aerosol can be natural in the form of fog or mist anthropogenic aerosol can be in the form of smoke now carbonaceous aerosol is also the part of aerosol it is the major dominant component of the suspended particulate matter in the polluted atmosphere is consist of organic carbons and black carbons or elemental carbon the combination of organic carbon and elemental carbon is known as total carbon the comparison between the aerosol and particular matter it is a uh, common question to everyone that what is the difference between the aerosol and particulate matter aerosol is a suspension of solid particles or liquid droplets in air or natural gas where particulate matter or particulates are the solid particles or liquid droplets uh, suspended in the air uh, aerosol can remain air air as well as the particles where uh, particulate matter only remains in the particulate matter as size of the aerosol is always less than the 1 micrometer where particulate uh, matter sizes uh, are greater than 10 micrometer or sometimes it can be less than 10 micrometer also the example of aerosols are fog mist dust forest fire steam etc where uh example of particles uh, are the volcanic eruption dust storms forest fire sea spray etc now if we see the typical aerosol size distribution we will find that whatever aerosol is coming out in the ambient air it is in the uh, lower uh, size of particles uh, generally the size of the particles varies uh, from 0.005 to less than 2.5 micrometer and aerosols uh, are coming out in different modes and is generally classified as four modes initially the aerosol are uh, emitted in the atmosphere in the form of nuclei mode and sizes in that particular time it varies from 0.005 to less than 0.1 micrometer and an accumulation mode uh, uh, it is uh, varies from 0.1 micrometer to less than 2.5 micrometer uh and five mode uh, is uh, 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 the another mode uh, particle size is greater than or equal to uh, uh, 2.5 micrometer and accumulations of the nuclear mode to nuclear mode uh, the bigger size of particles comes up and fine mode also again they clubbing to each other and finally it is uh, converted to the coarse mode and that time diameter of the particle is greater than 2.5 micrometer if we find the size of composition of the aerosol uh, it can be uh, classified as dust gases and bioaerosol dust uh, is the half of all the components like pollen heavy metals cation and anion and carbon compound where gases uh, can be sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide carbon dioxide uh, nitrogen dioxide volatile organic carbons and carbonyls and bioaerosol is consist of virus bacteria fungus etc uh, other than the, except the sulfur dioxide all the compounds like carbon monoxide carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide volatile organic carbons and carbonyl they have the tendency to form the carbonaceous aerosols next now we have found that aerosol has the effect on climate and into governor planet of climate change that is ipcc has reported in the year of 2001 that aerosol has both warming and cooling effect greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide halogen compound solar radiations 
uh, uh, mineral dust uh, tropospheric ozone have uh, only the warming effect where aerosol have both a uh, warming effect as well as the cooling effect especially the black carbons or elemental carbon which is coming from the burning of fossil fuel is give uh, gives us the uh, warming effect where organic carbon which is coming from the fossil fuel burning uh, it gives the cooling effect so aerosol is directly directly or indirectly linked with the climate change now we have found that art surface temperature is increasing day by day this slide showed the uh, surface profile of our temperature for the 140 years and it was observed that 140 years the average surface temperature has increased by 0 0.6 plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and that uh, increasing of temperature was taken place during the, the last 20 years that is from 1980 uh, from 1980 to 2000. So day by day, uh, uh, our temperature is increasing and it was observed that due to the emission of large quantity of aerosol, the directly or indirectly, our surface temperature is increasing. Now we have coming from the uh, composition of the carbonaceous aerosol. It mainly consists of two compounds. One is organic carbon, another is elemental carbon. Organic carbon is nothing but it has the large variety of organic compounds like aliphatic, aromatic, polycyclic, aromatic hydrocarbon, acid, etc. Organic carbon is emitted from both direct and indirect sources. And in general, volatile organic carbon condenses in the atmosphere and form the secondary organic carbon also. So organic carbon has the tendency to form or convert to the secondary organic carbons. And major source of organic carbon is biomass burning, vehicular emission, industrial combustion, and degradation of carbon-containing materials. Elemental carbon or black carbon is directly emitted to, uh, into the atmosphere during the combustion of the fossil fuels. The combination of organic carbons and elemental carbons is generally known as the total carbon. Then it is uh, measured as uh, total carbon Tc is equal to organic carbon plus elemental carbon. The major sources of organic carbons can be two types. One is biogenic sources, another is anthropogenic sources. Biogenic sources from the plant, isoprene, moto, mono, Oh, prince, aromatics compounds are releasing in the atmosphere and they have the tendency to react with the organic gases. And after reaction, uh, the uh, compound is formed, it is condensed uh, and it is converted to the organic carbon. And uh, the, uh, this, is, this type of organic carbons is from, from the biogenic sources where anthropogenic sources uh, due to combustion of the fossil fuels or biomass burning, direct organic carbons are emitted in the atmosphere. The major sources of black carbons or elemental carbons can be regular emissions, cooking uh, with the biofuels, uh, open waste burning, open waste burning, Diwali uh, celebration, stubble burning, industrial pollution, etc. The uh, now it is a very important how to measure the carbonaceous aerosol, especially the organic carbons and elemental carbon. The, there are few uh, analyzers are available in the market, and one uh, analyzer name is Black Carbon Analyzer, and it is an online uh, analyzer. In this analyzer, we can measure only the black carbon or elemental carbon. And another analyzer is available in the market that is OCEC analyzer, organic carbons and elemental carbon analyzer. Uh, and uh, this uh, analyzer uh, is uh, uh, developed by De Desert Research Institute. And in this uh, slab, uh, uh, analyzer, we can measure both organic carbons and as well as the elemental carbon. But uh, initially, it was required to collect the particulate matter in the quartz filter paper. 
the importance for measurement of carbonaceous aerosol uh, is to understand the air quality and climate change characterization of particulate matter and its trend analysis source apportionment study and carbonaceous material uh, compound analysis etc and this is the uh, picture of the uh, occ carbon analyzer we will discuss in detail how to measure the organic carbons and environmental carbons in the instruments like occ carbon analyzer this instrument uh, is uh, uh, developed by dri desert research institute and model is 2001 it is basic it is based uh, on the thermal optical method and in this method we can find out uh, various compounds of organic carbon as well as the elemental carbon the principle of the organic carbons and elemental carbon analyzer is that initially it is required to collect the particulate matter in quartz filter paper and a punch of quartz filter paper of having area of 0.5 cm square is analyzed in the analyzer and the rising temperature uh, in the analyzer varies from the ambient temperature to up to 870 degree centigrade and it has two catalyst one catalyst is manganese oxide and it is used uh, to oxidize the soot or organic carbons into carbon dioxide initially carbon is converted to carbon dioxide by the catalyst of manganese oxide and that carbon dioxide will be converted to methane by the catalyst of nickel and um, methane uh, will be detected by by flame ionization detector and uh, whatever methane co uh, concentration is coming out based on that uh, through the standard method we can find out the various concentrations uh, of organic carbon as well as the elemental carbon now in this analyzer we can find we can uh, 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 analyze the four fractions of carbons that is oc1 oc2 oc3 and oc4 and uh, oc1 concentration uh, emitted at the temperature uh, from 25 degree centigrade to 140 degree centigrade oc2 emissions can be taken place from 140 degree centigrade to 280 degree centigrade oc3 the concentration emitted in the uh, temperature of 280 to 480 degree centigrade and oc4 carbon emission taking place at the temperature of 480 degree centigrade to 580 degree centigrade and all the analysis are uh, carried out in pure helium gas and helium gas uh, uh, should be so much pure so that we can uh, get the good quality uh, of organic carbons uh, results and combination of all the fractions of organic carbons like oc1 oc2 oc3 previous slide oc1 oc2 oc3 oc4 uh, will be uh, be the total carbon concentration in the ambient air uh, in this uh, analyzer we can find out the three fractions of elemental carbon and three fractions uh, emitted at the, the temperature uh, from 580 degree centigrade to 840 degree centigrade Uh, EC1 fractions coming out at the temperature of 580 degree centigrade. EC2 uh, fractions coming out at the temperature of 580 degree centigrade to 740 degree centigrade. And EC3 carbon emission temperature uh, should be in the range of 740 degree centigrade to 840 degree centigrade. And this analysis is uh, uh, carried out in the mixture of helium gas and uh, carbon uh, oxygen gas. Sorry, oxygen gas and helium should be. 98% and oxygen concentration uh, should be 2% only this is the mixture of helium gas and oxygen uh, gas and the fraction of three uh, fraction of three elemental carbons like ec1 ec2 and ec3 will give the total concentration of elemental carbon the combination of organic carbons and elemental carbon is also known as the total carbon and total carbon tc is equal to oc plus ec now the yeah, instrument has the minimum detection level and organic carbon uh, minimum concentration can be measured as 0.82 microgram per centimeter square for elemental carbon it can be 0.19 microgram per centimeter square and for total carbon the concentration minimum can be 0.93 micro 93 microgram per centimeter square 
uh, we have carried out one project in Narayana industrial area in Delhi in the year of 2013. And in this case, we have found out organic carbons, elemental carbons, and total carbons in PM 2.5. And it was observed uh, that monthly basis uh, uh, organic carbons and elemental carbons and total carbon is following some trends and annual average concentration of organic carbon varied from 32 to 49 microgram per uh, meter cube elemental carbon it varied from 10 to 60 microgram per meter cube and total carbon it varies from 42 to 66 microgram per meter cube now uh, in this project we found the various fraction of organic carbons and elemental carbons in total carbon in the particular size of pm 2.5 we found the four fractions of organic carbons oc1 oc2 oc3 oc4 and three fractions of elemental carbon ec1 ec2 and ec3 oc1 concentration varied from 0.4 to 13 percent oc2 concentration varied from 22 to 28 percent OC3 concentration varied from 23 to 24 percent. OC4 concentration varied from 4 to 14 percent. Major component of OC fraction is OC2 and OC3. And for OC3 and OC3, the biomass burning is the major cause for uh, cons uh, organic carbon and elemental carbon we found that EC1 concentration varied from 32 to 36 percent and EC2 concentration is much much lower than the EC1 concentration it varied from 2 to 3 percent and uh, EC3 co concentration uh, is equally smaller than the, uh, than the EC1 concentration and uh, uh, major contribution source of EC is from the vehicular emission. And OC1 concentration is nothing but, but it is a volatile organic carbon. Now, in this uh, slide, we try to find out the correlation between the elemental carbon and organic carbon, uh, as well as the elemental carbon and total carbon. And it was found that uh, elemental carbon and organic carbon is moderately correlated, then R square value is coming uh, 0 0.74 and elemental carbon and total carbon also uh, highly correlated and highly correlated and concentration uh, correlation is coming approximately 0 0.85. Now here we can uh, we try to find out the correlation between organic carbons and total carbons and total carbons and uh, PM 2.5 and it was found that organic carbon is highly correlated with the total carbon R square value is coming with 0 0.98 even total carbon is also highly correlated with the uh, PM 2.5 concentration and uh, the correlation factor is 0 0.97. So it was found that organic carbons, elemental carbons, and total carbons are uh, highly correlated to each other. Uh, and total carbon is also highly correlated with the PM 2.5 concentration. Now we can find out the secondary organic carbon. Secondary organic carbon is also uh, emitted in the atmosphere and we don't have any direct measurement for secondary organic carbon. Empirical formula has been developed by the researchers and scientists and it was found that secondary organic carbon is the total organic carbon minus primary organic carbon and primary organic carbon it is nothing but the ratio of OCEC minimum uh, multiplication of elemental carbon. And in this project, we found that OCEC ratio uh, having the large variation and minimum OCEC uh, variation was 1.25. So based on that, uh, we can find out the, the secondary organic carbon as well as the primary organic carbon and secondary organic carbon plus primary organic carbon, which, which gives the total concentration of the organic carbon. And in this project, we found the primary organic carbon as well as the secondary organic carbon in PM 2.5 in the ambient air. And uh, we have uh, uh, found in the seasonal based, uh, in the, we have uh, selected the four seasons like winter, then pre-monsoon, monsoon, and post-monsoon. And it was found that secondary organic carbon formations is very high in the pre-monsoon and post-monsoon season. Lower uh, temperature, 
uh, and uh, humidity gives the more uh, emissions of the secondary organic carbon as compared to the primary organic carbon. Huh. Now, uh, in this slide, we uh, have tried to find out the total carbonaceous aerosol. Total carbonaceous aerosol also, we don't have any direct method. It is uh, measured uh, on the basis of empirical formula, which is developed by the researcher as well as the scientist. And total carbonaceous aerosol formula is nothing but the organic matter plus elemental carbon. Organic matter is nothing, but it is the concentration of the organic carbon. And organic carbon concentration varies, uh, depends upon the uh, area. It can be urban area or it can be non-urban area. Urban area, organic matter concentration uh, uh, can be find out by uh, measuring the organic carbon concentration into multiplication uh, into 1.6 where previous slide where non-carbonaceous uh, non-urban aerosol organic matter concentration uh, can be find out uh, by the formula of 2.1 into OC huh? organic carbon and total carbonaceous aerosol is nothing but the organic matter and uh, elemental carbon and that uh, total carbonaceous aerosol concentration depends uh, uh, at what location we are finding out whether it is urban uh, area or non-urban area accordingly organic matter concentration has to be find it out. Uh, this is the mass closure analysis has been carried out in PM 2.5 and it was found a total carbonaceous aerosol in the uh, Narayana industrial area which is carried out uh, in the year of 2013 in Delhi. We found that total, or, uh, total carbonaceous aerosol concentration is 48% eh? and non-carbonaceous aerosol concentration is 52%. So carbonaceous aerosol has the major importance especially for the uh, mass uh, of the uh, particulate matter. Huh. Uh, total carbonaceous aerosol uh, concentration is very much important because the carbonaceous aerosol concentration is approximately 50% of the total concentration of the particulate matter and it is the most important component for management of the air quality or improvement of the air quality in the particular zone. And based on the common sources, uh, uh, common uh, uh, sources, uh, uh, so common sources ha has been identified based on the OCC ratio. And OCC ratio uh, depends uh, for multiple factors. Like if OCC ratio is greater than or equal to 1.1, then there is a chances for the vehicular emissions. If ratio uh, lies within the range of uh, greater than or equal to 2.7, then there is a chances for emission from the coal combustion. Then the OCC ratio within the range of 4.3 to 7.7, uh, 4.3 to 7.7, then uh, there is a chances uh, for the carbonaceous aerosol emission from the kitchen activities and uh, OCC ratio greater than or equal to 7.3, then there is a chances for wood burning. Uh, if OCC ratio within the range of greater than or equal to 9, then there is a chances for biomass burning. Biomass burning has the maximum uh, uh, OCC ratio where vehicular emission has the lowest OCC ratio. Thank you.